Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Today I will be doing the ligation and transformation protocol. So I will be ligating the RFP that we digested into the biobrick vector. The total volume of the ligation reaction will be 10 microliters. So first I have to decide how much volume of the vector and the insert I will put. After calculating the concentrations and taking into account the length of the insert and the vector, I will put one microliter of the vector and three microliters of the insert to keep the one to three ratio in terms of moles between the vector and the insert. So here will be the tube for the ligation. And a good thing when doing a ligation is to also do a negative control where you only put the vector and no insert. Then after transformation, you will be sure then for the positive sample, the colonies you will see actually correspond to your ligation and not to the re-ligated vector. So first I will put one microliter of vector into both tubes. So in the positive sample and also into the negative control. And next I will put three microliters of insert into the sample, into the sample tube. And for the negative control, I will put three microliters of water. Okay, also in the uh, ligation mix, there will be the ligase and the ligation buffer. The ligation buffer has ATP and magnesium chloride, which are both required for the functionality of the ligase. The buffer is 10 times concentrated, so I'll put one microliter of buffer into each tube. One and one. The total volume of the reaction will be 10 microliters, as I said. So we will have to add four microliters of water into each tube. And it's very important whenever you're doing a reaction with an enzyme to put the enzyme in the very end once, once there's already the buffer and other components in the mix so that the enzyme does not lose its efficiency. So I will put one microliter of ligase into each of the tubes. Okay, and now I will mix gently by pipetting up and down. Okay, so now the mixes are ready and it's time to incubate. Uh, the protocols for incubation can differ. Uh, for most efficiency, uh, you can uh, leave the tubes at 16 degrees overnight, but if you're in more of a hurry, you can leave them for one or two hours at room temperature. Once the incubation is over, I can now proceed to transformations. So I will aliquot my competent cells into two tubes, one for the negative control and one for our sample. Okay. 
Okay. The cells are already thawed. And now I can add the ligation mix to each of the samples. I will add one microliter, but you can go up to five microliters total. So one microliter of, of the sample. And one microliter of the negative control. Very importantly, you can flick the tubes to mix the samples, but do not vortex them because otherwise it can damage the cells. For maximum efficiency, you can leave the cells on ice for up to 30 minutes, but if you're in more in a hurry, once again, even five minutes will do. All right, now that the cells have incubated with the DNA, I can now do the heat shock, 42 degrees for 30 seconds. Okay, the time is over and I can add medium to the cells to help them recover. Some people add 100 microliters, but I prefer to put one milliliter of medium to help them recover. You can use LB or other regular media that you usually use, but for a higher efficiency, you can add SOC medium, which is richer and will increase the transformation efficiency. So I will add one milliliter to both tubes. Okay, and now I will take them, put them at 37 degrees with shaking to help them recover and put them in, into an incubator. And now we wait for one hour. One hour is over and I can now take my cells out of the incubator and plate them. So I will have one plate for our RFP sample and one for the negative control. I prefer to plate at sterile environment. And I will plate 100 microliters of cells per transformation. So here is the negative control. and the RFP sample. Now we'll put some beads on the plates. And shake them to distribute the cells. So now it's well distributed. I can throw away the beads. And I can put the plates at 37 degrees to let them incubate overnight. And hopefully tomorrow we'll see some colonies. The next day, I will look if there are some colonies. And yes, you can see that there are some colonies on the plates with our sample and no colonies on the negative control, which means that our transformation worked and uh, we ligated successfully the RFP into our vector and the negative control with only the vector did not give any colonies. So this was the ligation and transformation protocol. Until next time, stay positive.
Thank you.